Thanks for coming out tonight. Okay, um, so I don't know if y'all remember, but the last time I spoke back in, for like five minutes, back in December, yeah, Christmas, um, we, we were talking about go and uh, how each, we each have a part and um, just go and get the lost and everything. Well, tonight I wanted to um, start there and just kind of go from there and talk more about serving the Lord in unity, how it's not just you as a single unit going. We are going as a body of Christ. So I want to start in Mark 16, 15. And it says, then Jesus said to them, go everywhere in the world and tell everyone the good news. Okay, so every, most people like read this first and um, the ministers are admonishing their flock to go and reach the world, which is extremely important. It's so important that we go out into our world, we go out into our neighborhood and we reach those people. But it's also important that we realize that we're not alone in that battle. We're not alone in, in the go. Um, Matthew actually took it a little bit further. And if you turn over to Matthew 28, 18 through 20, um, he says, now when Jesus came near, he spoke to them. He said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given me. So wherever you go, make disciples of all nations. That's the go. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then this is the part I want to get at. Teach them to do everything I have commanded you. So as you can see right here, Jesus is very, very, um, He's, he's really making a point and letting you know that it's important not just to go and get the people, but also to train them up. So he's letting you know that as a unit, it's important. Um, he, he, and also, I just want to make a little point here. He's also saying, um, teach them to do everything I commanded you. Well, obviously, this is after his resurrection. This is after the fulfillment of the law. So this is New Testament. I know a lot of people don't like to think of that as New Testament. Jesus saying New Testament, but he is right here saying, teach them to do everything I commanded you. So um, he's demanding that his children be taught his commandments. So Jesus still thinks that commandments are important and that you're not, um, you don't have to, it's not that you don't have to do them anymore because we're fulfilled under grace. Anyway, but um, then I, I want to say, let you know um, that Jesus is say, says in John 13, 35, that um, by this that you they will know that you are my disciples the love that we show each other and the love that we show each other is how the world knows that we are a unit how they know that we are the body of christ so it's very important that we show that love toward each other and love isn't just you know huggy huggy oh i love you you're so you're so cute you are adorable oh, i just love you so much i know i love the pink bows in your hair they're adorable um but it's not just that it's it tell, loving someone also involves making sure that they're staying on track that they're staying in they're walking with god that's very so important and in first thessalonians paul tells us he instructs us it's 1 Thessalonians 5, 12 or 14. He instructs us to make sure that we instruct the people who are getting unruly and who are getting off track. He's, he's letting you know it's okay to, to, to bring them back because that shows your love for them. That show, so when, you, when a pastor or someone in authority over you or even just a well-meaning person in the church is like, hey, I've noticed you've been struggling with this, and I just want to let you know that I love you, but I want to let you know that this, what you're doing here is not, that's, that's not quite right. That is God's love, and that Jesus wants us to make sure that we let people know that his, that, that they need to stay on track. Um, now, when, when um, people are brought into the kingdom. They become a soldier in the army. Okay, now, and th this is what Jesus is saying. He's saying, teach my people. So when you bring in a soldier, if you just hand them a gun and say, ready, go, that's, that's no good. They're not going to know what to shoot at. Half of them aren't going to know how to use the thing. It might blow up in their face because they don't know how to clean it and properly take care of it. They don't have the right equipment to keep themselves protected. 
when you bring someone into the kingdom, it's important to train them to, to make sure they know when, when people sign up for the Marines, they don't just hand them that gun. They say, okay, now here we're going through boot camp and we're training you. We're training you so that you can know how to, how to, how to go out into battle and not just how to go out into battle, but how to go out into battle as a team. That's the whole point of the Marine Corps. That's the whole point of the of Christians is to go out as a body, go out as a one. You cannot, I don't, I know a lot of us women like to boast on how we are able to multitask. However, when you multitask, you cannot you cannot, it's impossible to fulfill each task with excellence. You can do a good job at each one, you can, but you cannot, cannot fulfill each task with excellence. So w if we have, you know, half the Christians going off on this thing and half the, and you know, a third of them over here and the rest of them are over here, there, you're be, the, the body of Christ is being drugged in all these directions, and there's no way that we can fulfill the call the, to go into the world if we're not doing what we're supposed to do. So many of us are so involved in our own mind, and oh my goodness, I'm just so tired, I really don't want to do anything. We're so involved in us that we don't see the world out there. We don't see that, the, that we have to work with our brother in Christ and our sister in Christ to go out and to reach them. It's so important that we learn to work together because if we don't work together, we aren't going to get anything done. Do you know how long it takes one person to build a house? I don't even want to know. But, but so, so that's why they have, you hire a bunch, of, a bunch of people to build that house because it takes forever. And the people within that, they have one goal. The goal is build the house. You have people who are wonderful at putting up, the, putting in the foundation. You have people who um, they know how to put up the, the walls. You have people who are good at the plumbing, people who know how to do the insulation, the roofing, the sheetrock painting. Then you have people who know how to, once all the structure's done, they come in and they decorate and they, you know, put all that stuff in there together. So everyone's got this goal of making a home. And that's what we as Christians need to realize is that it's not just about this denomination and this denomination and, um, well, we don't believe like that, so we don't really talk to them. We need to understand that we have a goal. We have one faith. It's, it's all about unity. In um, Ephesians 4, 3 through 6, see if I can find it. Did anybody bring their Bibles tonight? Or am I the only one? I want to hear pages turning, people. <laughs> I know, right? Okay. Ephesians 4, 3 through 6. Um, through the peace that ties you together, do your best to maintain the unity that the Spirit gives. There is one body and one Spirit. In the way you are called to share one hope, there is one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over everything, through everything, and in everything. So what's the point of those verses? There's one God. There's one hope, there's one faith, and that's what we need to, fo that's what we need to focus on. These other things are, uh, you know, like these, these trivial things like that you can't really find in the Bible. People have these theological discussions. Well, I think that this is wrong, and if you disagree with me, well then, you know, da da da. I'm like, does that, is that even important? Does that even really matter? No, it doesn't matter. What matters is the faith, the hope, the calling of Jesus Christ on each and every one of us. It's so important that we don't, we don't get, get lost in these little things because that's, they're not important. They really aren't. If you wear red on Sunday, it doesn't mean anything. I don't care if someone says that that's the devil's color and you don't wear red on Sunday. 
who cares? Jesus doesn't care. Jesus, Jesus just wants you to just come. Just be there and come as a group and come before him and worship him. Forsake not the assembly together of one another. You come together as one body. You come before him and worship him. And that's when you get answers. That's when you come, when you come together. Oh my goodness, there's so much power in numbers. You know, when you, when people go in battle, they don't go one against a thousand because the one against the thousand, unless you have God on your side and he's sending all those angels with you, you're going to lose. In the natural, you're going to lose. So that's why it's so important when you go out to battle, you come in numbers, you come in groups, you come in large groups because, because when you're going against that, you need to have that backup. You need to know that that person beside you has got your back and that you have the same focus of victory. You need to know that. And you need to know that in this church, that when, when you're going through something, that it's not just you that's going through it. You need to know that your brothers and sisters in this church, not just this church, but the church as a whole, they have your back. You can call them at any time. And they, I'm going to pray with you right now because we're going to overcome this. It's so important that we realize, we realize just how important our brothers and sisters are. We need to realize that as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. It's, it's vital that we spend time with each other. It's vital if we're going to survive. If we're going to accomplish that, we need to be with each other. We need, to, we need to just come together and just talk about God. Do you know how much there is to talk about God? It's, it's endless. Just come together and worship Him and just and pray together and you'll get answers and you will see things that, that are going to happen, see things that are supposed to come. Now, and um, if you keep going down in Ephesians, I, I wanted to say another thing about the one faith, one love thing. How pathetic is it? I just want to say, how pathetic is it that a president, a former president of the United States, Abraham Lincoln, was able to understand that a house divided against itself cannot stand, and yet the church has, is just keeps splitting, keeps splitting, keeps splitting. So you have so many church splits these days, you don't even know who's who anymore. Oh, I thought they were the pastor of this church. No, this church split, and then that split out of that, and then that split out of that, and then it's like... You have, you had one church and then now you have like 10 out of this one church and because, you know, someone didn't think they had to submit. Woo and so you just, it keeps dividing and where's the strength in that? Where? There is none. Because, because we have so many squabbles with each other, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, did you see the way they looked at me today? They didn't even talk to me. Did you talk to them? Did you show them love? I've been through, I've been there. I've been there where you're just standing there and you're, God, I don't want to do it. I don't, I don't even want to look at them. I don't even want to look at them because, because you don't, Lord, you don't know what they did. Well, you do know what they did to me, but think about it. You know, and you have these arguments in your head with God. You know what they did to me, Shannon? love them. I can love them from a distance, Lord. <laughs> do I really have to, do I really have to go over and give them a hug? I really don't want to. Do I have to say hi? I don't, just don't. Okay, I'll say hi and that's it. That, that's going to be it. Well, really? Can you really work with someone like that? Can you really show, show love? Is that God's love? No, no, it's not. It's not at all. God's love reaches out to people. And, you know, and I've had to put that under sometimes. You just, well, a lot, okay? <laughs> you just, you walk in and you're like, oh, there's that person. I'm just going to, maybe they didn't see me. No, oh, well, then, then there's that check of Shannon and it's, hmm. So you kind of walk over there and then you, you give them a, Courtesy, hi, how are you? <laughs> Love you too. <laughs> and, then, and then, but the thing is, if, the more you do that, the more that action comes in, the more you start, you don't even real, remember why you were upset in the first place. Why, why was I upset? I, 
you know, and then it's, it turns into true love because you, it starts with the, okay, love you. <laughs> love you mean it. <laughs> Not really, but <laughs> love you. And then you just keep doing it and you keep showing that. And then it's kind of like, oh, I do love them. I do care about them. And that's what we need to do every day. Every day we see people. It, Jesus even said that, that they would know us, Christians, by how we love each other. And you know what? There is so little love in the body of Christ these days. It's pathetic. It is so sad. There's, there's more fighting in the body of Christ than, than even in sometime, sometimes in the world. Do you know how sad that is? Some people are like, they're Christians? I never would have known it. There were people on my college campus that I found out they were Christian, and I was like, oh, are you serious? <laughs> really? <laughs> You're playing with me, right? Oh, <laughs> okay, maybe not. <laughs> you know, and it's just like, oh, all right, well, <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> and it's, it's like, oh, okay, well, I'm, I'm really glad that they're a Christian. I'm glad they love Jesus. Now let's start working on the rest of the people because they're important too. That's Jesus' number one interest, you know? And if you don't treat other people with that same kind of love that he showed us, what's the point in being here? If you're so consumed with yourself, you're so focused on yourself, what is the point in being here? There is none. Why don't we just all fly away, all fly away, all glory, and hallelujah, by and by, I'll just see you later. Y'all have fun down here. I'm going up there with God and enjoying my life. No, that's, that's not it. That's, that's, ah, uh, that's so self-centered. That's so self-centered. Why can't we get along with each other and realize that Jesus has so much more for us? There's so much more. Oh, yes, yes, why can't we work together? Why can't we be patient with each other? Why can't we just love each other? And like I said before, love isn't just ooey gooey feelings of, oh, I just love them. They're so cute. Even when that person is not acting cute at all and they're having a grumpy day, you got to love them anyway. I don't care. I don't care if they, if, well, they, you should have seen the way they looked at me. You, you did not hear what they were saying about me behind my back. I have a right to be upset. Oh, honey. It, they're... <laughs> Talk about perfect timing, right? <laughs> there have been times when people have said some of the meanest stuff about me, and yeah, I get, I get upset, I get hurt, and I'm just like, God, how do I deal with this? I'm so, ah, oh, it just hurts, it breaks my heart, because there's, why? I don't know what I did, and then sometimes I do know what I did. You know, <laughs> that's the worst part of, mm, 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 I did mess up. I don't want to say I'm sorry. I don't want to say it. And there was a relationship with, with a friend that was almost ruined because, not because I had done anything wrong, but because I wouldn't say I was sorry. I wouldn't forgive them for how they had treated me. And you know what? That ate away at me. And that almost messed me up. Because, because it did mess me up for a while because I was so proud that I was like, I'm not forgiving her. She said something about me. She accused me of da 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 da. She did this to me. And I got me so off track in my thinking that I didn't even know where to start again. Because it was, I was, oh, I was so mad. And everything, everything revolved around that person. You know, and it was, and if something popped up on a social network, it was, oh, did you see what she posted? Oh my goodness. Oh, that has to be about me. Because you notice when you're mad at someone, everything they post is about you. Isn't that funny? Everything that's said is about you. And it's, I know they're talking about me. Do you realize they have 962 other friends? And it could possibly be one of them. Not everything in this universe revolves around you. Just saying. Say law. Think on that. Glory. It doesn't. And so there came a point in my life where I had to make the decision. There was no way to contact this person because um, 
many reasons. There was no way to contact them. I did not have an, a number, email, or anything to contact them. And so, that I had been blocked from Facebook and MySpace. <laughs> Yeah, so, you know, and it was just kind of like, you know, either I forgive them and move on with my life, or I sit here for the rest of my life and I just hold on to this grudge and just let it grow and grow until I just become so full of hate for this person that I can't move on with my life. Well, I had to forgive that person because I need it, because you need that person in your life. No matter how much you think you don't, you need that person in your life. I needed this person. And you don't have to talk to them every day to need them in your life. To be unified with them. You don't have to every single day. But you need to have that connection. You need to be able to walk in peace with that person. So in my heart, I forgave the, her. In my heart, I did. And with God, I did. And I said, Lord... That's it. I forgive her in here, and I forgive her with you. You know, we've, we've got us straight. I can't talk to her right now, but, you know, and I was kind of glad about that because I really didn't want to say I was sorry. <laughs> I didn't. Well, there came a point years later where this person showed up somewhere I was, and I had an opportunity to say I was sorry. Well, I didn't. And there was still that friction there. Didn't talk, just kind of, you knew the other person was in the room, but I'm not looking at her. I'm, you know, we're gonna talk right here and I'm not gonna look over there because I know she's right there. I can see her out of the corner of my eye, but I'm not gonna look because <laughs> I don't really wanna have to say I'm sorry. You know, oh, okay, Lord, I can do this right now, okay? <laughs> this, is, this is it. And then I went home that night Oh, the Lord was dealing with me, something awful. Oh, God. Oh, God. I couldn't even sleep that night. It was just eating me alive. You know, it was just like, right here, the Lord's like, Shannon. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to say it. <laughs> I felt like such a three-year-old. <laughs> like, I don't want to say I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the next night, I had, sh this person showed up again, and I was like, oh, why? Why? Two nights in a row, really? <laughs> Ooh, okay, I'm going to do it. Well, literally, the last possible moment, literally the last possible moment, I went up to this person and was like, just grabbed, grabbed her hands, and I pulled her up to the side. I was like, okay, okay, I can do this. Okay, God, I can do this. <sighs> All right, I just want to say, I'm sorry, and I, just, just, I just broke down, and it was an immediate just, whew. and it was like, she was like, I forgave you too, but I didn't think you'd forgive me. I was like, I forgave you, didn't think you'd forgive me. You know, and so we just, we had, there, there wasn't that communication and just, we were able to work things out and then that peace just came back in. Oh, and that's, and just, even if I don't talk to this person all the time, we still have an ability to where we can communicate and we, sh we are sisters in Christ. And we don't hate each other over something stupid. Do you know, how, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, how much more free you feel when you're able to walk with that person. You know, how much, how much more free are you able to feel? You know, and, and you get that relationship with that person to where you can talk to them about where each of you are messing up. Now, or even if you don't want to talk to the other person about it, you can, you can address some things. You know, it's like it, you can talk to each other through love and talk, you know, I know, you know, like be, just be talking and, you know, I know you've, you, that we both struggled in this area. Or I know that, you know, some things that you, you've been struggling with, but I want to talk to you about ways to get past this and to help you. And, you know, uh, honey, that you shouldn't be wearing that to church. Um, you shouldn't be acting like that, and in, in, especially not. In, it, you shouldn't be acting like that. Period. But really, not not a church, <laughs> you know, or or just about everyday things. You know, th there are things you need to just in love discuss with each other, and. It's just, it's because you love the person and you want to see them fulfill their calling. You want to see them get to where they need to get and they're not going to if they keep doing certain things. And it's, it's love that says that's wrong. That is love. 
It, you cannot tell me that is not love. The Bible right here tells me that it's love. Tells me that, that it's loving my brother and my sister to tell them that when things are messing up. You know, it, that's love. And it, you know, if it is not done in love, then it's wrong. If you are pointing out everyone's faults, I can't believe you wore those glasses today. Do you know how ugly those things are? You know, <laughs> where's the love in that? Seriously, <laughs> you know, but, but, or you have a bad attitude. You need to watch it. Oh, okay, log in your eye. One, toothpick, log. Really? Okay. So, just if it's not done in love, it, then it's it is wrong. Okay. Okay. Huh. Woo. Rabbit trails. Anyway, um, turn to Colossians two nineteen. All right, and um, it says, he doesn't hold on to Christ the head. Christ makes the whole body grow as God wants it to, through support and unity given by the joints and ligaments. Okay, and the word used right there for support and unity is, pardon my mutilation of the Greek language, symbibazo, which means to join together, to knit together, and then this part, to cause a person to unite with another in a conclusion or the same opinion. So what does that tell you? What does that tell you? That tells me that Paul is saying, this is important. It's not just important that, you know, you, you are both Christians. It's important that the things you believe line up with each other. The things you believe are according to the word. It's important that you unite with each other in the same conclusion or opinion that, that you can prove and demonstrate together the word of God. That's important because if you, if you do not have that same, the same view on Jesus, on God, on, on the very essence of the word of God and the validity of it, Huh, what's the point? You know, these people who are like, okay, well, we're just going to throw out this part because I don't like this part, and um, we're going to throw out this part, and uh, actually, the whole Old Testament, just cut that out. You know, the New Testament's the best part anyway, uh, which, I mean, it's awesome, but there's some, well, obviously, the Word says all Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, correcting, rebuking, and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The Old Testament's important. He was talking about the Old Testament. I'm just making that point. Okay? So it, this is, it's important that we understand that everything in here, everything is important for your spiritual growth, and it's important for the spiritual growth of the church that we become unified in Christ. If, if people are throwing stuff out, that is so wrong. Oh, Jesus, help them. In Revelations, he even talks about how wrong that is. You'll be cursed. Yikes! I don't want to be cursed. Thank God he already well, he came the curse for me. Praise God. But, you know, so, I mean, it, Paul's, Paul's making sure that we understand that we need to be knit together. And, okay, and, and think about that. When you knit something, how many ladies in here knit or crochet or cross-stitch or anything? We got one. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so if, if, if um, for some reason something goes wrong, so you're knitting, da 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 and then you get snagged, it, that messes the whole thing up just about, doesn't it? You just want to cry. <laughs> Jesus, why? <laughs> you know, it's, it's so just think about that. If, if, if your shirt or a blanket or something gets a snag, and slowly that thing starts falling apart. Unless you come in and patch it up and put something else in there and fix it up, it starts falling apart because, it, it, because it, all those pieces need each other. They're all woven together. It's, it, it's just, oh my goodness, when you look at your shirt, have y'all looked at your shirts closely? You know, and just like I do this, I'm, maybe I'm weird, <laughs> which is probably what it is. <laughs> you know, sometimes I'll just look and I'll be like, ooh, look at all those threads. And oh my goodness, can I figure out which way they're all going and like which one's attaching to which one? <laughs> Okay, apparently I'm the only one, <laughs> but that's okay. <laughs> you know, and then it's kind of like when you mess one up, when one gets pulled out a little bit, it's like, ah, that's messing the whole shirt up for me. Ah, that's frustrating. 
you know, because I'm like, oh, it's not perfect anymore. It's not pretty. It messes it up. And then you have to go in with a patch and or whatever you do to fix your shirt or, you know, whatever piece of clothing. And it's like, this doesn't look quite right anymore. You know, but then you have to kind of get over it and move on with your life and be like, okay, you can either wear the shirt with the patch or just not wear it anymore. Okay? <laughs> so, and, and, and a puzzle piece. You know, when you, ha it, do you know how important a puzzle piece is? You know what I'm talking about? You put together a puzzle and then there's that one piece that's missing and you're like, uh, where, where does this go? <laughs> and the, or like you, or there's one piece in the very center and you cannot find it in the box. It's not there. It's just, it, you're dumping everything. There's no puzzle piece there. That piece, it's so, it's like an eyesore in this whole beautiful work that it's gone. It's messed up because it, that's how we as a body should be. We should all be there. We should all be accounted for. And we, we don't need to be the missing puzzle piece off doing our own thing. I just want to go do my own thing. Y'all can have fun being a puzzle. I'm going to, mm -mm. you know, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't like puzzles anyway. I'll be over here. <laughs> no, no, we are a body. We are, we are together. What happens if, if, um, if you don't have your hand? So people, you can survive without it, but the, the hand says, um, I want to go live in Asia, and the rest of you says, I'm going to live in North America. Well, that's a problem. It doesn't exactly work, does it? No, I'll answer that. No, it doesn't. <laughs> that's what he's getting at here. We're a body. The body goes together. It follows the head. Jesus is the head of the church. The church is Jesus' body. We go where Jesus says go. So many people misunderstand that. They think, I become a Christian. I get to do what I want to do when I want to do it. Lord, I don't really care what you had to say. Go, okay, so people, someone came and got me and brought me into the body. Well, huh, that's wonderful. I'm sitting back. I'm doing what I want to do. Thank God for his grace. I can do whatever I want to do. And the rest of the body can do what they want to do. They can follow you. They can confess their sins if they want. I'm not going to. I'm going to live the way I want. I will not forget forgive people if I don't want to forgive them. I will not be patient with people. I will not love people. That, that is not the essence of a Christian. That is not the essence of what it is to be a believer, to be in the body of Christ. To be in the body of Christ, you have to constantly put yourself under. Constantly. You have to kick yourself in the head sometimes. <clears throat> I don't want to have to do this, but I'm going to. <sighs> and you have to get your attitude right. Okay, Lord. I love you because I love you. I'm going to do this. The, the word says to do everything you do as if you're doing it for the Lord. Um, turn over to, where is it? Where is it? Colossians 3, 23. And I'm going to read this in the Amplified. Um, I've been using God's word translation tonight, all tonight, by the way. And it's awesome. I just got this translation and I fell in love with it. It's amazing. Anyway, um, Colossians 3.23, whatever may be your task, work at it heartily from the soul as something done for the Lord and not for men. So it's important that we see that every task we are given is in, it is an order from the Lord. It is a gift from the Lord. If you are gifted with cleaning, Lord knows I can do it, but that is not my calling. My father, on the other hand, he's like the little Mr. Sweep guy. He goes in, and like five minutes later, the whole house is like sparkling. And I'm like, that would take me two hours. <laughs> but So that's not my calling, praise God. But if that's your calling, or even if it's not your calling, you have to do it. Do you know how many times that people do things that isn't necessarily their calling? And they just do it until someone who com someone comes into that church that is gifted in that area can do that, and then that person that person who was doing it can fall into where okay, whew, now someone's come in and praise Jesus, this person is gifted in audio, and praise Jesus, I don't have to do audio anymore, and I can do what I'm good at, you know. So 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 when you know you come in and when pastor asks you to clean the 
clean? <laughs> Pastor, that's not really my, my gifting. <laughs> Please don't ask me again. <laughs> you know, Pastor, that's I'm not good at cleaning, so you know who who cares? Pastor asked you to do something. Yes, sir. <laughs> How long when do you want me there? What do you want cleaned? I'll, okay, da 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 da. I don't really want to clean the bathrooms, especially the men's bathroom. Ew. But I will do it because pastor asked me to, and because pastor asked me to, I know it's something the Lord would want me to do, because my pastor asked me to. It's so, it, oh my goodness, so, so many people have a bad attitude about their pastor asking them to do something. What does he think I have? All the time in the world? What do you think he has all the time in the world? He can't do everything. Uh, I'm sorry, this is just... <laughs> <laughs> he can't do everything. He's just like, you can't do everything. We are, we are a body. We are together. Everyone has their part to play. You, this church cannot function without each and every one of you. You are so important. Don't think you're not important. Don't think no one in this church cares about you. Don't think that there's, I just don't have a calling. Yeah, you do. If God's called you to clean toilets, clean toilets. You're good at it. If God called you to run the audio, run the audio. You're good at it. If he called you to play the piano, he will teach you to play the piano and you will be good at it. If you know how to run lights, if you know how to help with the kids, if you know how to get food prepared, and you know, pastor wants to do a, a something with food in the mor you know in the mornings before church, and you, well, I I'm a good cook, I can bring food, you know, uh, well, I'm really good. He's really good at making coffee, so he'll make the coffee in the mornings. It's every one of you is important. Everyone, and if we don't have every one of you, then then there's something lacking. There's that missing puzzle piece. We are a body. This church is a body. This and this church is part of the body. We need each other. It, and and we need our pastor. It, where are the sheep without a shepherd? What does the shepherd do for the sheep? What does he do? The shepherd provides protection. He keeps them from going astray. Even if sometimes those sheep are, I want to do what I want to do. But, and there's a cliff right here, and the, sh the shepherd's going, come back, come back. If those sheep don't come back, they're going off the cliff. And their life is ruined. Now, that's not to say they can't get back on track, but the shepherd's there for your protection. The shepherd's there for your guidance. God put him here. He put him here. So you thank God for him, even if you don't like what he has to say every Sunday. He's my daddy. I love my daddy. Do I always like everything he tells me to do? <laughs> no. <laughs> but I say, yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it. <laughs> and I do it as fast as I can so I can go back to my movie. <laughs> but I do it. <laughs> so we just... <laughs> <laughs> we have to do what our pastor calls, asks us to do because he sees that you are important. He sees it, and he sees that you, what you're good at. He sees your talents. He sees your giftings, and he, he, he goes, ooh, key. Thank you, Jesus, for sending them to my church. <laughs> I can use this. So don't, don't think that, oh, I'm just going to, you know, go to this church because they don't need me here or I have nothing of value to give. You have nothing of value to give when you refuse to give it. When you hold back that talent because you're too shy, trust me, I know, I know, I'm good at camera stuff, I'm so good at camera stuff. And we're out in Oklahoma, working at, uh, at Rama, you know, going to Rama right now, and they have cameras, and they need help with the cameras, running the cameras. And I'm good at camera stuff, I went to school for this. Well, I got distracted, and I, then I got shy, and I'm like, well, I don't know if I can go over to the cameras because, I mean, well, are they going to think I'm, like, stupid or something coming back after being, you know, not helping with the cameras for so long? Get over yourself, Shannon. Just go help with the camera. If they tell you no, they tell you no. Is that really going to hurt your feelings that bad? Are you that sensitive? If you are, toughen up. The, huh, no. That really hurt your feelings that bad? No. No, 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 no. 
get over it. Okay, okay, well they don't need me at the cameras right now, so I'm gonna go see if I can volunteer with the kids. We need nursery workers, <laughs> yeah. Taking care of the babies is so important. Why is it important? I just don't understand. Why can't those parents take care of their own babies? Well, why don't you offer up one Sunday, sacrifice yourself, get back in there and take care of those babies so those parents can come hear the word of God so they can learn for themselves so they can train their child up the way he should go. Sacrifice yourself. Put yourself down. Put yourself under. Why don't you just tell yourself no once in a while? That's the problem is a lot of people, a lot of times, we don't want to tell ourselves no when it comes to anything. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> we just, we don't. We're so, we're so mm, self-centered and it's sad. It's so sad. Why can't we just get over ourselves, tell each other we love each other, accept instruction, accept, accept it, correction. That's the problem is a lot of times we are, I don't want to be told I'm wrong. <laughs> well, you're wrong, so get over it, fix it, and move on with life. R right? Yeah? yeah? Amen? Why don't, why don't, if, if we don't, if we don't learn to accept the instruction from our peers and instruct, accept the instruction and correction from our pastors, we will never go anywhere in life. We will get stuck. We're just going to get stuck in a place and really just kind of be like sitting there. Well, you know, the reason that the pastor is giving you that instruction, the reason your peers are giving you that instruction is to help you because they love you. They want to see you get where you need to get. Because when you grow, the people around you begin to grow and, and then that church begins to grow and begins to blossom. You need each other. We do. So don't walk in, sit at the very back, and walk right out and not say a word to anybody. That's so wrong. Where, where are we helping each other? Where? Where? If we do that, where are we? Sh Am I back? Am I? Where are we sharpening ourselves if we do that? Where? We're not. And I have gone really long, but I'm, yeah. <laughs> we need each other. That's, that's the point. That's the point of everything. I didn't even get to all my notes. Good Lord. Um, but we need each other. We cannot, cannot fulfill our calling without each other. Amen. Amen.